Hello and welcome. This is the tutorial for how to use XCard. First, you want to access your admin login screen. To do that, it's typically yourdomain.com forward slash admin. Once you access that, you'll enter the username and password that were provided to you for access to your new admin area. You can click the login button or simply hit enter or return, and then you'll be redirected to your main page. Once you log in, you will see you have your general information. You have your quick menu, last order statistics, top sellers, they also have a quick start help guide, or you can go down and view users management, create some quick uh, little information here. These are basically quick ways to get to where you need to get to. And then your order info will show your recent process, declined, not finished, or queued, and you will see data in there. This is a new website, and we're using this for demo purposes, therefore there is no information. And our top sellers, of course, would be listed here as well. So on the left-hand side, we see users. Go ahead and click on that. And this is where you create all of the users that have access to the system, whether it be customers or admin. So up here we can search for users, which is the screen that we land on, create an administrator profile or a customer profile. And if you want to search for a user, you simply type in some user information in the search, or you can click and leave it blank and it'll show you all the results as well. To modify a user, simply click on the name and you can modify all of their general information, including whether or not you want them to have access. So you can turn off someone's account or if you have memberships assigned in your website, you can prevent access to certain areas with that membership. Next is categories. Now categories, we have sample data in here installed by XCART for this demonstration. So we have books, DVDs, videos, computer, and so on and so forth. Now it shows you on this page how many subcategories you have and how many products are assigned to that category. And you can click on the actual number of products and assign your product position inside of that category. It's a little hidden XCART secret. So go ahead and click back on categories and then click on books or whatever your category is and you can create new subcategories by clicking the add new button creating featured products which are basically products that will appear at the bottom of that category or modify an existing category. So you see here we have our category name, our clean URL which was already entered by the system and replicated, a description for that category a membership level, typically we want to leave that at all, any keywords or description for this category. And we can actually choose to have every category that follows beyond this to have the same meta information so we don't have to cut and paste it on each one of those pages. And then we have here is where does our category live? It lives on the root level, which is the base of the site. So that is pretty much categories. You can also turn them on and off and change the positioning of the categories simply by modifying the numbers here. The lower the number, the higher they list. And one little tidbit on the main categories page at the very bottom the featured products are the featured products that appear on your home page if you have that feature enabled. Now let's click on manufacturers. Now most people won't have manufacturers on their website but if you do this area is typically used for say you have multiple brands or multiple products from different vendors and you want to show who those vendors are. Say you're a music store and want to show that this is by Fender, or this is by Gretsch, you can actually have a page dedicated where it'll show all the products for that manufacturer. It's quite a nice feature and this is how you use it. So when you click on the manufacturers link, you click on the add new button and here you can create a manufacturer name which I'll just put test manufacturer you can upload a logo or image, a description, URL, and meta information. You can also enter the position of it if you include multiple manufacturers. And then once you save that, you click on the manufacturer list and it'll list all your manufacturers inside of here. On a wish list, 
This is basically where you can search if you have the wish list feature enabled and you can see what people are wishing for essentially. Or if they call you over the phone and say, I put something on the wish list, can you tell me more about it? This is a way to do that. Under orders, this is where you search for all of your orders. Now currently we have nothing inputted into here because this is a demo site, but we would have search results, be able to click on the order ID, and then from the order, print a shipping label. We can print out the order invoice, and we can also mark the order as paid, completed, failed, back ordered, and so on. And you can also include special notes for that area. Under news management, this is our newsletter. And we're gonna go ahead and create a newsletter right now. So this is the demo newsletter and sign up for the demo newsletter. Active, yes. Available for subscription, yes. That means people can choose if they want to subscribe to it. And then show messages and cite news, yes. This is the newsletter that I want to show. Now, essentially this is the newsletter category. Now we're going to create our actual newsletter by clicking on messages. Now we go ahead and click on the add new sale this weekend. Stop by our website and get 90% off. This is a demo so I can do ridiculous percentages. And you'll put in all your content. Now this form actually supports both HTML and plain text entries and it'll decipher between the two. And if you have a what you see is what you get enabled browser you can use this feature. Unfortunately, this is not available for Safari at this time. Now, HTML tags are allowed. We're gonna say yes or no. Show as news. This depends on where it's gonna show on your website, if you have it on your homepage or in your news area. Yes or no. So this is basically if it's active or not. And then you can send a test to you at test at demo.com or whatever your email is and this will send your email only to you and not out to your list. To send it out to your list, you would simply click on messages and then click on the send button and that would send to everyone at, that is in your list. But until you do that, make sure you test it and make sure everything looks all right, all your images show up and all, everything is good. Under subscriptions, this is where we would see any of our users that have subscribed to the system. So I have added test at test.com boom and if for some reason we need to remove them we just click the checkbox and delete selected are you sure yeah get rid of it all right to import it's pretty simple to import just choose a CSV file and import the emails now this system only supports emails does not support name and email so only put emails in a single row going down in either an Excel or Microsoft Word file and title it whatever your file name is dot csv and choose your file click import next option down is statistics now right here it shows a lot of different fun options um, we went ahead and put this site up a couple days ago so we can go ahead and show you the statistics or else this would be blank so let's go ahead and click through here our general statistics we have here number of customers number of providers products and so on and so forth Shop statistics, well, no no categories viewed because no one's been using it. It's a demo site, there ain't much to see. Top paths, well, we're not going to see any information through there, but this would show you what paths people are taking as they visit your website, as well as the top views, shopping cart, and we have login history. These are all the times that I've logged in, and this is good for security. If you suspect someone's had access, you can see who logged in and when, and you can say, hey, wait a minute, that's not my IP and I wasn't at home at that time near a computer so that'll help you and then we have the environmental statistics it shows that I'm on a Mac it shows I'm using Safari my screen resolution if I have Java and JavaScript and cookies and then we have search statistics this will basically show what was typed in the built-in search to find products and this will help you with your search engine optimization as well so let's go down here to the next option, shipping methods. Now right now shipping is currently disabled. So let's click on that. And we're going to uncheck disable shipping because in this demo we are shipping a product. 
So we're going to turn on the real-time shipping options. And we have some other options here. Do not calculate shipping products with a predefined freight. That sounds like a good idea. Do not require a selection of delivery uh, for products with free shipping. Sounds like a good idea. So let's scroll to the bottom here. And if we have a UPS account, we enter that information here with the server name and web tools ID. And then with our FedEx, we enter our FedEx account information right here and put test mode to no. And then click save. Once we input, input that information, we can then test to make sure that the connection is valid by entering a package weight and clicking the test. And it'll bring up a test shipping uh, variable. Right now we have no information in here, so we're not going to test it. Going down the list as well, we have tax system. Tax system, this is basically where we define our taxes for the site. So we're going to make one here. Service name, we'll call it CA. Display name, California for California residents. Registration number, eh, we'll leave that blank for now. Priority, we'll give it a priority of 10. And then we want to apply the tax to the discounted subtotal. You also have the option of taxing shipping, but a lot of people don't like that. Or simply to the subtotal and don't tar charge a discounted subtotal. But we like to charge our discounted subtotal, so it makes everything fair and how it's supposed to work. And this depends on the shipping address because, as you know, tax is out of state. So we're going to go ahead and wherever that's shipped at, if it's shipped anywhere in California, and I'm going to show you how that's going to be set. So right here, we set, oh, wait a minute, zone default. What is zone default? Well, destination zones. And we're going to skip down to this area under inventory temporarily because we need this in order to make the other system work properly. So we're going to add a new zone, and we're going to call it California. And before we click Create, we're just going to go down here and look for California. Move that over and then save the zone details. And you'll see it automatically moves over United States. So anyone within the United States that is in California will apply to this zone. Now we go back to tax system, select our zone, and then the new tax rate unfortunately is 9.75 for LA County. So it's 9.75%. And then that's applying to California. Membership is all. And this again applies to discounted subtotal. We add that in there, click add. We now have just defined our tax rate for XCard. Now let's look at ratings. Now if you have customer ratings on your site and you want people to rate your products and write comments, this is where you can modify those ratings. Say sometimes you get spam or nasty comments. Just make sure you have CAPTCHA, which is where you type in those digits at the bottom of the uh, submission box turned on to prevent you from getting any unwanted spam in your comments. Next option down is countries. This is where you modify our countries, sure enough. So say for whatever reason, heaven forbid there's a war and we take over something and the United States acquires some new land like Canada. Well, then we're gonna go ahead and add that inside here. And next option down is states, same thing applies. If uh, someone succeeds, like Alaska, then we go ahead and tip the checkbox and hit delete selected. Gift certificates. If you offer gift certificates, you can either offer them on your site or in the admin area, you can create them for users over the phone and then send them to their email. Now there are customizations for the gift certificates. Ask your developer and he'll let you know about that. But this is where you enter those and it'll automatically generate a gift certificate ID that is usable on your website. And that is it. I hope uh, this has been informative and if you have any questions, please let us know and we will uh, update this tutorial. Other than that, thank you for joining us and we look forward to helping you out with the next tutorial.